the modern era, there are so many different signals around us, emitted from the likes of mobile towers and radio towers. What can we do with the existing signals? Can they be utilised in any way? Well, it turns out we actually can utilise these signals. This is achieved by the concept of backscattered communication, the utilisation of signals without having to generate them, giving birth to a range of different applications. An example of this is your mobile phone RFID cards, contactless cars, as the RFID tag feeds back radio frequency information when it's in range. So what is ambient backscatter communication? To help us explain, we based our research on the Ambient Backscatter Communications Contemporary Survey paper. These backscatter systems can be classified into three domains. Monostatic, bistatic and ambient backscatter communication systems, where monostatic backscatter consists of backscatter transmitter and a reader, and it works by a source generating radio frequency signals through which the transmitter modulates and reflects the signal. Bistatic consists of a carrier emitter and backscatter transmitter and receiver, and ambient backscatter is very similar to bistatic uh, communication systems using radio frequency sources such as TV towers. These are the energy harvesting applications of the ambient-like backscatter system. WPT, wireless power transfer, allows for the device's battery to be ch charged wirelessly. WPCN, wireless powered communication networks transmit power to the wireless device and use this power to transmit data. Lastly, SWIPT, the, sim the simultaneously wireless information and power transfer scheme allows for power and information to be transferred at the same time. Monostatic, bistatic and ambient backscatter communications share the same principles of operation, with the front end of the backscatter transmitter consisting of an antenna and impedance loads to produce a modulated signal. This essential reflects a signal for further use. With respect to decoding the a modulated waveform, this is possible through a second circuit comprised an antenna, a low-pass filter, a comparator, and finally a decoder to recover the data. The working principle is as follows. Transmit data to the backscatter receiver. Backscatter transmitter harvests energy from the received signals. Carrier signals are modulated and reflected by switching the antenna. The signal in the antenna of the backscatter receiver are processed by the RF interface. Received signals are passed to the filters to recover the reflected signals from the backscatter transmitter. These signals are then modulated by the demodulator and converted to the bits by the converter to extract useful data. The modulation and demodulation can be achieved through three methods. Amplitude shift keying, ASK, frequency shift keying, FSK and phase shift keying, PSK. But why? Why is this even useful? In these systems, transmitters use low-cost and low-power components which significantly lower the system cost and system power. There is no cost for deploying and maintaining radio frequency sources, direct device-to-device -device and multi-hop communications. A limitation, however, is there is a negligible interference to licensed users. So what are the applications for this technology? There are many opportunities for device-to-device -device communications. This allows for applications such as the Internet of Things, logistical and medical applications. Smart home applications can allow the ambient backscatter communication system to be placed in discrete locations, allowing for a range of applications such as environmental control. A biomedical application, such as wearables, requires sensors and nodes. This has led to the development of another area known as wireless body area networks. Logistics are another application, allowing for GPS-like behaviour. Further applications consist of the popular RFID, as we talked about before, cognitive radio networks, wireless-powered communication networks, and visible light backscatter communications, and LoRa long-range technology communication type devices. Are there any problems? Well, of course. There are two main problems we found during our investigation. Interference with licensed users, meaning the data can be stolen, and the lack of standards and protocols. To summarize, we discussed the principles of ambient backscatter, found that it's a low-power device that can be integrated into a sensor network, thus giving birth to a range of applications such as the Internet of Things. <laughs>
that's all from us thank you very much